Hello! So today I'm going to be talking about I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Hartman. A Belgian novel originally written in 1995 and now undergoing a small resurgence since its re-release, I was keen to give this one a go. Two things before we begin. Number one, if you are reading the re-release of this novel, do not, do not, do not, and I mean do not read the foreword, okay? Do not do it, because it is going to completely and utterly ruin this book for you. Number two, I am really tired. It's been a really hard week for me, everybody. I know, everybody's tired, everybody's knackered, life is hard, I get it, but I'm, I'm pretty tired. Uh, and I just don't have the energy to talk about this book without going into spoilers, okay? Uh, the magic of this book is it's a bit of a mystery. You don't know what's going on. You are trying to figure everything out. And with all books like this genre, it's best for you to know nothing, absolutely nothing going in. Just get swept away in it and by the intrigue and the kind of philosophical musings that that intrigue offers the reader. That's the best way to do this book. I just don't have the energy and I can't be bothered to talk about this book without spoilers because very, very early on, uh, the novel takes a shift. It turns in a different direction and it is a massive spoiler. If you go in knowing nothing, it's a really interesting turn that the novel takes, but it happens so early on, I would have so little to talk about. Yeah, so I'm just going to talk about this book. I might not go into major spoilers, but I'm just going to talk about this book. And if I cover some spoilers, I do. So this is your warning. If you want to know absolutely nothing about this book, but you are keen for my kind of little overview, my, my little review, I'm going to leave a timestamp up here. Uh, go to that and that will be my very quick sort of like finish off of my final thoughts. OK, going into spoilers now. Blurb time. This is a dystopian novel, very understated in its nature, in which we follow a young girl. A young girl who has grown up underground in a cage with 39 other women and a handful of guards who keep watch over them and bring them their food. The guards are silent. They never, ever talk to the women. Our protagonist is the youngest of this group of women without a name or a remembered past. The women around her can all remember their past lives, the world they used to know, whereas she knows nothing. She is just surviving off of the scraps of information that the women give her. She has become so accustomed to her life in the cage that even things like going to the toilet whilst chatting and holding a conversation seems completely normal. And then, one day, through a chance bit of luck, as the doors are being locked for the food to be delivered, there is a siren and all of the men disappear. And the 40 women now have their freedom. Suddenly everything has changed, yet nothing has changed, as the world outside the cage seems just as obscure and strange as the world within it. She is a woman who has never truly encountered men and must now navigate the world without a history, reinventing herself step by step. Freedom has in fact presented itself to our protagonist as the most challenging and terrifying of unknowns. It's a mystery box novel. Imagine a novel Piranesi in which we're piecing things together, trying to understand the world, but without any kind of conclusion. We are going on this journey with our nameless protagonist and we are trying to figure things out. Is this planet an alien planet or is it our own world? Is it the far distant future? What has happened? Who are the men? Are they aliens? Are they human? From what we can piece together along with our nameless protagonist, things feel similar. Things feel like our world, but then there's these very tiny, small little nods to things that make Make it feel like it might be an alien planet. Uh, the mystery and the intrigue all adds towards the philosophical musings of our protagonist. The novel is posing in a very simple and succinct way questions on the value of humanity and the value of the search for knowledge and actually what is freedom and how do we as humans define freedom. So there you go that's the blurb that's kind of what this book is about so let's move on to what did I like and what didn't I like. What I liked I loved the writing style. It is completely stripped back. There is no meat on the bones of this prose. It just, it's so succinct and to the point, yet deeply, deeply philosophical. It moves at a rapid pace. It is a very short novel. I did it in a single sitting, but yeah, it just, it's so poetic without being too flowery. It gets to the point, it's philosophical. Single sentences had me thinking and thinking and thinking. Yeah, the, the prose was an absolute win for me. Now, if you've been following this channel for a while, you know I do have an issue with novels that are deliberately open-ended, that really provide absolutely nothing because it just feels lazy. But I'm going to get on to that in my dislikes. However, I do feel like the way the mystery, the intrigue is kind of brought into the journey we're going on and the sort of philosophical questions that the novel is asking us, it just made everything really vivid, 
really haunting. And I think what was chosen to be used, the details that were given, were so precise and small and exact. It was masterfully done. So as much as I, when I get into my dislikes, I'm going to talk about my issues with, with things that are quite open-ended and how I think it's really, really lazy. I'm not going to deny that there is craft, absolute craft going on in what has been chosen to be included. The little mysteries that have been highlighted at and how that adds towards the way you think and ruminate on the novel. Yeah, it is done really well. And bouncing right off the back of that, the way that it's structured, the way that it builds, gives you this constant pursuit for answers whilst giving you just enough to allow you to not get frustrated. I also think that this book is the perfect length. If it had gone on any longer, then I think most readers would just get frustrated at the lack of answers, would just get frustrated at not knowing anything or being given any form of closure. I think this novel, even though it's short, is exactly as long as it needed to be. Which is rare for me to say, because I'm the kind of dick who always seems to go, oh, it could have been a bit longer, it could have been a bit shorter, but no, this novel, <laughs> it nails it. It gets it just right. What didn't I like? It's actually a load of really small things, and all of these things were minor frustrations, but nothing that really damaged the novel for me. I might as well get it out of the way, but the lack of context or closure might be frustrating for some readers like myself. I fully understand, I absolutely understand that this is not a novel about any form of closure. This is a novel exploring the idea that sometimes we do not get answers to the things we seek in our lives. And sometimes that pursuit for knowledge can be fruitless. I really do get that. And I think the power of the novel and where this novel is working really, really well, and I should have stressed this more in my likes, is how much it causes you to think as a reader, how much it sort of gets in under your skin and sort of haunts you a little bit. And yeah, I was really consumed whilst reading this one. However, however, I will never not think that the device of just throwing loads of mysterious things into the pot and providing no answers will ever be anything other than very, very lazy. And I repeat, before you come at me, it doesn't take away from the beautiful writing. It doesn't take away from the impact of this book. It doesn't really take away too much from my overall feelings and thoughts about this novel, which I think I definitely will reread at some point. But I've got to stick to my guns. I do think as much or as well crafted as the little elements within this novel are of the mystery that's building and of the world and what we're trying to figure out, as well crafted as that is, it just feels lazy to provide zero answers, to give us nothing. It just feels very easy to just go, uh, and then she discovered this little thing, and then this little thing, and oh, that doesn't happen around here, why is that? And then this happens, and then that happens. You could just, you could think of anything, couldn't you? You could just be like, and the worms were yellow on this planet. Do you know what I mean? Like, you can just add in these little details, these small little things, and if you're providing no answers, it's really easy to do. Now, the beautiful writing isn't easy to do. The way that she is layering in these different details that cause you to really think philosophically about so many things. It really opens up your mind, this novel. All of those things are so insanely hard to do. They are. Um, I wouldn't be able to do it. I can't do it. But I do think, give me a day. I mean, I am a writer. I write theatre shows. But give me a day and I could probably put together... Uh, loads of small little mysterious things. Um, the hard part is linking them all together and, and making all those things have some kind of meaning narratively. And, and that's, I know I've gone on a bit of a rant, but that's where this book is just falling down is that narratively it's, it's so weak. Um, but yeah, but it's not, it's not about that. But the reason I'm stressing it is some of you out there uh, before picking this up should definitely definitely know that because what I'm saying you might go oh yeah that's the type of reader I am Andy um, I get it I'm not going to pick this one up and hopefully yeah hopefully that helps and the rest of my dislikes really are very small petty things that I won't go into detail about because they're just small little gripes and yet again they're sort of like little narrative things it's just when the women leave the cage uh, they seem to adjust to life outside of the cage very very quickly um, none of them even have any sort of sense of Stockholm Syndrome in which they have become accustomed to their life in the cage and sort of don't want to leave. They all sort of seem to leave and, and not want to go back, but seem to adjust uber fast to living outside of the cage. And that was a bit jarring to me narratively as the novel progressed. It was the only moment where I was a bit like, whoa, that's a bit of a, 
they just adjusted to it. Okay, uh, and I, I wanted a bit more in regards to uh, living as a captive and then that sort of sense of freedom. Uh, yeah, that was just something I would have liked a little bit more of. And I've got loads of, of little things like that, but they, they really don't matter in the grand scheme of things. But overall, I mean, that's it for my dislikes. So my final thoughts, if you're the type of reader who can suspend their disbelief, then I think you're going to enjoy this novel a lot. If you're the type of reader who likes to go on a bit of a philosophical journey, to open up your minds to questions of uh, what is the purpose of knowledge, what makes us human, what makes us human within society, then I think you're really, really going to enjoy this novel. Uh, but if you're the type of reader who wants something narratively to be really precise and have clear conclusions, then I would say that this probably isn't the novel for you. Overall, I thought this novel was very good to excellent. I'm going to give it like 3.5 to 4 stars out of 5. So have you read this novel? And if you have, what did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please let me know in the comments below. And as always, I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying whatever you might be reading. And I'll see you all on the next one.